We are finally getting back to renovation projects after the holidays and new year, and we're starting off the year strong with a giant list of projects that we need to accomplish. This week, we are in the dining room and kitchen, and yes, finally putting our pretty cabinet doors on the refrigerator. Welcome back to the cottage. If you saw last video, I was a little under the weather. I am better. And we are back to renovations, finally. We've been here for a little over a week and we haven't been able to dive into renovations as much as I wanted to, but that's over. Over on my vlog channel, I walked the whole property with you guys and we made a huge list, two, two pages full of things that still need to be done. Attention to detail things. So we are starting on this list. We are working through the major items, really going through the house and completing rooms that we've already done makeovers on, uh, like we are standing currently in our dining room. There are just a few things to really check this room off the list as being completed. One is the crown molding, two is putting another coat of paint on the pashmina trim because we actually ran out of paint when we did this makeover. So putting one more coat and sealing the floors. That's it. And then we can move the furniture back in once the floors are sealed and the room is completely finished. So that's really what I wanna tackle this year as we move into other spaces too. We still have the primary suite, so the bedroom and bathroom. We still have the coffee pantry. We still have the laundry room, the guest bedroom. So we still have new spaces to make over, but we can't disregard the things that still need to be done on the spaces that we've already started. We are really gonna be focusing all of our efforts in this episode in this area. So dining room, kitchen, back door area, this side of the house. We've done all the hard work on restoring these 110 year old floors. We've from taking up old linoleum to sanding them many, many times to get off layers of paint or old flooring. And they're almost there. All they need to do is be sealed. We've cleared out the dining room. We've cleared out all the rugs and everything that we have been using since we've been living here. And we just need to give it a light sand with a palm sander, nothing crazy. I just have a few spots where maybe some paint has dropped or you know little things that I've sealed and stuff. So we need to sand it down a little bit and seal it. So we'll be sealing at the end of this episode while we work on some other fun projects in this area. So we're gonna head outside and get the tools that I need. It is also about 35 degrees here in Texas today. So we are trying to prioritize indoor projects that we can work on, indoor painting, indoor things, because I don't think I'd last out here for long. Okay, so we need a palm sander. I think I'm gonna go with square because I need to get closer to like the edges around the walls and this is going to allow me to do that so I need this and some square sheets of sandpaper I have them all here I have 150 grit 40 grit we just need something light 150 is going to do it just fine also might need some wood feeler if I see any gaps uh, in the flooring where we laid some new ones. I have golden oak and I have walnut. It's kind of like the floors are kind of a mixture of the two, so both work really good. So after I sand, I'm actually gonna be tackling some painting projects, uh, so especially like painting the trim, and then we'll again eventually get to some of the cabinet doors. Yes, we are painting the cabinet doors on the refrigerator front. So it's gonna be really exciting to see the refrigerator finished. Um, so I'm gonna grab my painting supplies. I'm gonna need a smaller, um, roller thing like this and these smaller rollers. What is this called? Wand handle, paint roller handle, something like that. Probably a wider brush like this and some painter's tape for some straight edges. So a little, a little hack that helps some is to actually hook up a vacuum cleaner hose to the end of the sander because all of the shavings and what you're sanding off goes then to the vacuum cleaner instead of out into the air. It helps a little bit. It doesn't totally eliminate it, but any help we can do while we're like living in here is, is very helpful. And you little miss cannot be over here when I'm doing this. I just wanna go over just a few spots I see just to, once you seal it, it's sealed. So this is our opportunity. It's 
story being told inside my head I'm too shy to straighten up my bones and be a man I gotta tear this wall perfectionist I go over things <laughs> and I see things I just want to make perfect it looks really good now now I'm going to vacuum everything and I'm gonna go over it with a, a wet mop no solution no nothing just to get everything off so that there's no gunk so this big silver thing is our refrigerator if you've been following along as we were ordering appliances and things for this kitchen I really wanted a cabinet ready refrigerator so when it's I'll show you it's our refrigerator literally so you can kind of have refrigerators in two ways, I guess. One, a regular regular style refrigerator that you see all the time. I'll put it in a picture. Or you can have a cabinet ready refrigerator where actually cabinets go on front of the doors and you have pretty handles so that when they're closed, you wouldn't even know that that's a refrigerator. It looks incredibly custom, really built in, like just like designer, like it, it elevates it. And cabinet ready appliances really isn't that much difference in price than a regular refrigerator, but you have to pay for the extra cabinet fronts for them. So that's kind of where the cost comes into play. So we've had our refrigerator installed for months and I've been working on all of the cabinet doors for the entire kitchen. But my plan was to always build all the cabinet doors. I'm, I'm doing them myself and I have a whole video tutorial on how I'm doing them. My plan was to do them all, so all 46, I believe, of them, or 42 of them, and then paint them all at once. Set up a paint station outside and paint. Since we're in winter, that's not going to happen fairly quickly. I'm hoping I have a warm day so that I can do it. I already built these cabinet fronts. I just have to add the trim detail that we're doing um, on the inside just to give them a little more detail. But So you can imagine, this is going to go right here. You see how it just turns into a cabinet door? It's, it's wild. I, I love it. Um, so I've already built these. Then I realized it dawned on me last night that I was like, oh, well, the backs of these don't need to be painted. Uh, so I can go ahead and paint them by hand and we can go ahead and have actually the cabinet fronts on this refrigerator so it doesn't look so bad. And every time we want to open the refrigerator, we have to like grab the sides. So we could start using the actual handles. We'll lift them up and paint them. But I have to add the pretty trim first. I just got this at Home Depot. It's kind of a stock trim. And it has, if you can see, it just has a little bit of bevel. And by adding it to the cabinet fronts, it made it just look that much more like cottagey. Like it, it looked like it fit this house better. Um, but we're just gonna use some wood glue and also some 5 8 nails 5 8 inch nails right there we don't really want it to ooze out but enough to make it stick like that and really why i'm just using the brad nails is that i want it to stay in place while it dries is pretty much almost the same color as pashmina so it's going to be fine underneath um, but ideally on lighter colored paints I would use white primer but it's totally fine and I have it so I'm gonna use it because I have it so we're gonna go in with a brush first and then roll out the sides super easy primer dries pretty fast so we'll be able to paint these tonight with the pashmina and then install them tomorrow if I ask you Don't hold back on me Only better If you set it free In a new light We can see everything 
Okay, while the primer dries on the cabinet fronts, I'm gonna put another coat of pashmina on this trim. I feel like it just needs it. I've been like, I see some streaks and that's really not what I want because everything was done, had to be done by hand. So I think one more coat is going to do it. So I'm just kind of cleaning as I go. Okay, for our cabinets, we used a higher quality paint. It's actually the advanced line from Benjamin Moore. It has a really good like leveling property. So you're gonna have like a really like smooth surface. Like if you were to paint with a spray gun, it's like things that you wanna paint that are used a lot, like tables or I don't know, like uh, kitchen cabinets. Definitely want a better quality paint. I painted the boxes also, like the outside. Anything in the kitchen that was painted was done with, with this higher, higher line. And I'm gonna do two coats of this to give it a really nice finish, even maybe three coats. And what I found with cabinets is that the, the best way to get a really smooth finish is light coats of paint and lightly sanding in between. So on these edges, the flatter surfaces, I'm gonna take a light sandpaper to it. It's gonna give me the best smooth finish for the cabinet fronts. You'll always be the one, the one minute. You'll always steal my breath away. Yeah. You'll always be my heart. Good morning guys. I spent the night putting the rest of that second coat on all of the trim. It looks so much better. It definitely needed it. And all of our cabinet fronts are done for the fridge anyways. They look so good. Um, just those attention to detail kind of things. I have the covers for all the plugs and the switches and I like to paint them the same color as the paint. It just makes it feel more elevated and makes it disappear. Like I don't want to see a plug. Like, you know what I mean? Like you want them to disappear. So this color, this is almond, I think. Um, and this actually looks really good with the gray mist. I didn't need to paint them for the gray mist, but for the pashmina, it's darker. I definitely do. So I'm gonna give these a coat. So with your refrigerator, it'll come with like an installation kind of instruction pamphlet, I, I believe, at least ours did. Um, and this is how I knew exactly the dimensions to make my cabinet fronts. So it tells me, I didn't have to figure out how they were gonna to touch or, or, or what size, it told me the exact dimensions. So this is what I went off of. And it also tells us how to install them. And I have a pretty good idea of it, um, of how, how it's kind of done. They're basically like a piece of metal we take off and we put on the back of our cabinet doors and that's how we assemble it. When we first got the refrigerator, I was installing it myself and so I was building out all of these cabinet ready like panels in the box and everything. I read this manual like six times before I even started it to really understand how it worked so that I could build the right box and the right cabinet fronts. So cross your fingers with me that it'll actually work. Okay, our first step, it says open the doors and we're gonna unscrew this like metal piece that runs along here. That's what attaches to the back of the cabinet doors. And then we screw it back into place and it like all of this disappears. 
So. Okay. So you don't need to unscrew them all the way. <laughs> that noted. Unscrew the angle trims from both sides of the appliance doors and place the trims and screws to one side. They will be required later. Close the doors. Okay. Say to measure the distance between the bottom of this cabinet door and this bracket. Okay. So six inches down. Okay, this is the piece we need. Now what? We're gonna lay our cabinet front upside down so that we can attach this thing. Mark the six inches minus an eighth and then mark the center. Eight and seven eighths. McKenna. Oh. Okay. Put this one top and mount this on there. And that, 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 and then we put the handle on. So. Okay. Screw in the appliance handles. I got these handles. I've had them for a few months actually because when I started to think about hardware, uh, big handles, hard to come by when you're salvaging. Um, unless you wanna pay a real lot of for them or something. So I found these and they're beautiful. I found them on Etsy. They have like some, you know, rib detailing and then a flat part that goes right up against, you know, the cabinet door. They are 20 inches long. So I found them on Etsy. After I ordered them, I realized that it was from a company in Thailand or uh, overseas. They, I ordered them, they came in, they came pretty quickly actually, but they have like little, and I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but they have like little teeth marks where they gripped it to kind of assemble it. So I reached out to the company and I was like, these were pretty expensive. I would rather not have those marks on them um, from like wrenches and stuff and they weren't very accommodating. Um, they weren't going to do anything about it. So that kind of upset me, but I talked to my mom about it and like the odd, we're never gonna notice that and it's fine. She, they just said that like all of our products are handmade. I'm like, well, my products are handmade and I'm a perfectionist, so <laughs> we have a problem. And I got three of them, so there'll be two on the top refrigerator doors and then one on the freezer. So let's find the center. The center this way and the center this way on this cabinet. And I always double check by going the opposite way. Oops. Now we'll measure how far apart the holes are at its center. I have a little bit of a stressful trying to find the right screws for this, but look how pretty. I'm in love. Let's hope this works, you guys. <laughs> Who knows? There's like adjustments that you could do to it. Now we need these like um, slides here. Screw these in. to do the top ones first. <laughs> that is so good. I can't believe I did 
to do this sooner. I love them. Um, so did the top ones first. Now we have to measure the dis distance between the bottom of these cabinets to the top of the brace here, minus an eighth of an inch, because we want that eighth of an inch gap between all the cabinets and everywhere. So we've got one and five eighths total. So it's one and a half. So I found out by doing those two that it was really hard to do the handle after I put that frame on because the refrigerator doesn't know what kind of handles you're gonna get and where the position for the screws need to go through. Um, so I had to disassemble the first one. So I found it easier on the second one to actually do the handle first and then put the bracket on so it's like not in the way. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. in the right direction and I'm actually glad we waited until oh Kinsley wants this I'm actually glad we waited until after we had done a lot of the work in the kitchen because we would have messed up the floors you know what I mean like it was like I was painting a lot and installing cabinets and doing tiling as much as it's kind of annoying to have to move everything out in order to do this I am actually glad that we waited so we have the one I researched a ton a ton and this one kept coming up as the best. It is pricey, but we restored 111 year old floors. Like all the work that we put into it, I want it to last. Do you know what I mean? So it's called Bona Traffic HD. It's a waterborne wood sealer. I like water-based sealers in general for all of my projects because it doesn't yellow over time and it has less harmful kind of chemicals in it. Uh, like it's not as bad to breathe, like the oil-based and uh, it's just overall. But water-based tends to not be as good as oil-based, but this one is, it has great reviews. I think that that used to be the logic, water-based wasn't as good as oil-based, but I think water-based like sealers have come a long way. So this one is like a high traffic one. So we put two coats in the living room. It worked really well. I did two coats in the guest um, bedroom. We've already sealed that as well. And we opted not to stain the original floors because they had naturally aged over time and I loved their color. I didn't want to do anything to them. I just I wanted them left natural. So that's why it's really important to have a sealer. So it comes in two parts. It's the big jug and then you add in the hardener. I'm gonna vacuum it one last time to make sure there's nothing on the floors and I'm gonna do a wet mop. Just a lightly damp one to make sure that there's no leftover sawdust or anything. Uh, and We are gonna seal. So let's lay 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learning how to actually complete a cabinet ready fridge or cabinet ready appliances. I was definitely pretty intimidated by it. I just had never done it before. So I didn't know how the cabinet fronts actually got on the fridge. I love cabinet ready appliances over a regular one because this doesn't even look like a refrigerator. It looks like a large cabinet and it just, your fridge and your appliances just kind of disappear having it cabinet ready like that is so beautiful. And it really wasn't a hard project to accomplish once I built the doors. Oh, she she thinks for herself. She, she lets out the air and thinks for a minute and then slowly closes. Like magic. <laughs> I'm gonna spend the next few hours getting the second coat of sealer on these floors and then they're gonna be done. I can scratch it off my list. This is done. I can scratch it off my list major this is major pretty progress so next week we're going to continue to make pretty progress i have a whole list of renovation projects to work on and i am diving into the cabinets we're going to have a week of warm weather so if i can get them all built we can get them all painted and finally see what the kitchen is going to look like with the cabinet doors and drawer fronts installed so i will see you guys next sunday bye guys love this look at this I can open the fridge without, you know, hurting my hand. This is incredible. I have to call Romeo. Hello? You want to see what I did? Let me see. Wow. Damn. That was so good. Doesn't it look excellent?